Hey guys, welcome to another five minute rounds. This week I've got a pretty cool case for you. Uh, not pretty cool, it's really cool. What can I say? <laughs> I don't show you guys pretty cool cases. Um, so this is a 16 year old cat that has a nodular mass in its right caudal mandibular area, which was about 0.5 centimeters in firm. So this is the aspirate of that mandibular um, that mass noted in the mandibular region and we're at 10x right now and one of the things you can notice right away is that there's kind of two different populations of cells in here and we can't exactly tell who they are just yet um, so we'll get closer but I do want you to notice that there are these cells all these in this gen oops my arrow is going rogue all these in this general area and then there are these that appear differently. So we're going to look at both of those populations, but first I'm going to start in this area. And getting to our higher objective here, we can start to make out that there are a population of cells that generally look intact. There are some that are kind of ruptured, but like, let's look at this group. These cells here are nice and intact. I can see a little sliver of cytoplasm there, so I know that we've got nice intact cellular borders. So these guys are all intact, and these are all small lymphocytes. So small lymphocytes, small lymphocytes, all in here. And then we've definitely got some ruptured cells. All of these guys are splatted out, so we just have to ignore those. We don't see any cytoplasmic borders. But again, all of um, the rest of these cells are small lymphocytes. And going into this area, again, all of these intact cells are small lymphocytes. So I'm thinking, okay, well, we can have small lymphocytes in, you know, inflammatory lesions, but there are a lot of small lymphocytes in here. And, and then I think, well, okay, I'm in the mandibular area, so I bet this is actually a submandibular lymph node. So this actually does fit with a submandibular lymph node based on that. Um, of course, if it wasn't in that location, I might be thinking of other things, but it all fits very nicely with this very marked population of small lymphocytes in this general area. So then we think, okay, well, what were those other cells? So I'm going to back up again. Oops, sorry, too bright. And we're going to look at this population now. So now we know that most of, the, most of these cells all around here surrounding these big groups are small lymphocytes. That's our lymphoid population in this lymph node. Then the question is, what are these? And when we look at these closer, they're hard to even get on the screen because they're so big but these are not supposed to be in a lymph node. So these cells are epithelial. You can tell that because they're clustering together. They're really disorganized, but you can see there are junctions between them. They're stuck in these tight, cohesive groups. These cells want to stick together. They are not individualized like you'd expect round cells to be. They're not um, spindly like mesenchymal cells. They are stuck in these tight groups. So then you kind of notice, okay, wow, these have some really significant criteria of malignancy too. We've got some anisocaryosis, so this nucleus is much bigger than the ones around it. We've got prominent nucleoli. There's a nice prominent nucleolus in that one. Um, definitely ugly, ugly cells, but the, the criteria of malignancy above all in this case is the fact that these are even in a lymph node. So these cells should not be in a lymph node in any circumstance. So even if these didn't have all this nice criteria of malignancy again here, this is a nice group where you can see real prominent nucleoli. Yikes, that thing is huge. That nucleolus is huge. Um, nice anisocytosis here because this cell is really big compared to its neighbors, which are a little bit smaller. I think this cell has two nuclei, so really nasty cells. Um, but again, even even despite the fact that these have that criteria of malignancy, they should not be in a lymph node. So this is consistent with metastatic carcinoma in this case. This poor cat has metastatic carcinoma. This is actually a submandibular lymph node that has neoplastic cells draining to it. So this vet needs to take a very, very thorough look at the areas that are draining to this lymph node. Um, he probably has a mass in his mouth, I'm assuming. I uh, definitely want to check under the tongue. Um, this could be a squamous cell carcinoma. This one doesn't necessarily show squamous cell features, but you can get squamous cell carcinomas that don't have that particular squamy look. But it could also be any other generic carcinoma. So in either case, metastatic carcinoma um, in this submandibular lymph node. Sad day.